come back together as koi pond. So, um, this week I've got a couple of little jobs to do, a couple of things to discuss, and a couple of little issues that I need to get sorted out. So, <coughs> first one being the small little pond, the Balgan um, Half Moon. Last week I did the cleaning and maintenance of the filter, and like an idiot, forgot to uh, clean out the uh, impeller. The water flow seemed a little restricted, so I'm going to uh, take that apart, give that a clean and re reinstate it. The uh, second one is lovely weather today, blue skies, cracking morning. The second one is I'm uh, going to um, have to make some changes with the big pond. The reason being is I had to remove my backy shower from Apex Koi. <clears throat> the reason being is, as you all know, I had a problem with a leaking weir. That problem got sorted temporarily by myself by doing a bit of a repair to it. And then the next thing was to obviously contact him and I got a replacement weir sent out. So in the short term I did a, a repair to it. Sent me a replacement out so I'll put that one on too. <coughs> After just short of two weeks the new weir started to leak again. So having a bit of a closer inspection and a look at it I realised that it wasn't just leaking from there, it was also leaking on one of the wells on the second tier front left. So I contacted him, let him know, basically told him that three leaks and three components within less than three months it just isn't up to the job and I'd like a refund. So Friday it was boxed up, or Thursday it was removed, boxed up, and the courier came and collected it on Friday. I informed him and let him know that the courier had been and collected it for it to go back. As of yet, I've had no response, no reply. I just hope that uh, he refunds me my money so that I can get in touch with JS Coy and pick up the new one from themselves. So that's where we are at present. I'll spin the camera around and let you have a look. Give me one sec, spin it around. So this is what we've got now temporarily. I thought I'd leave the uh, the floor in and still moving. Seems silly to remove it all when in a matter of days or weeks the new shower will be going in. That said, it's finding the new shower. If I don't go, I mean the, the one that I'm looking at from JS Coy, he does one in a 370 size and one in a 570 size. The three tier is quite expensive in my opinion for its size and the two tier 570 holds more media so that works out being cheaper. I only want it for the uh, beneficial bacteria side of things. The filtration side of things is done through my own which I'm on also thinking about making some alterations too. But right now that's where we are, that's what we're up with. I'd like to say the week got better, but it didn't. <coughs> After uh, last weekend's troubles, they was only made worse by my father being rushed into hospital on the Monday. Um, thank God they've managed to find out what was wrong. He had an internal bleed. He's had, well, he's been in all this week. He's had over nine pints of blood given. They've found the uh, area where it was, it was bleeding from, and they've managed to be able to get that rectified. So this week and last week has been a complete nightmare. Um, but the main thing is, he's on the mend, and you know he's in the right place. Fingers crossed. He's a speedy recovery, and he's back home soon. So the other one is, 
I want to replace the uh, the air stone just down there because although they are putting out a fair bit of air they do look as if they could perhaps be putting out a little bit more not as much as they used to be so I'm going to replace these air stones and then the general filter clean and then we need to see if we can saw something or do something with said backy shower so that's the plan usual job probably get the grass cut as it dries off but as we all know guys I mean these mornings that I've been getting up now the temperatures are dropping it's becoming a lot colder than what it was the pond temperatures now are at Sixteen degrees, so that's a lot cooler on the night now than what it was before. Sixteen degrees is certainly taking a dramatic drop, but we're getting up in the morning slightly foggy. Autumn's definitely here. Things are all starting to change a little. The fish are the fish are doing okay. I do have the odd one or two fish. Now, I mean, I don't know if you guys know this, but it's something I've found online and something that I've noticed myself to be truthful, up to press. Um, people call them long fins, depends what your butterfly koi. But long fins stroke butterfly koi, when there is any problem or water quality issues with your pond, tend to get a little bit veiny in the fins. And yesterday, I noticed that that was the case for one of mine so I did a little bit of a water change and this morning having a look at the fish seems perfectly normal again but I mean I suppose that could also be stress which could be you know anything from a predator hanging around or anything like that so it could also be an indication to that so it, it, I'm not saying it's science or anything but I did notice that when my several months ago just when I, before I got the first backy shower that one of my uh, butterfly koi I'd got red streaky front pectoral fins and obviously you know that made me think oh hang on there's something not just right there so after checking the water parameters I did have a slightly high level of ammonia which was the reason for obviously then water changing and uh, getting a vacuum shower in just to increase the filtration so there you go I don't know if you've ever noticed it if you haven't you know there he goes out. He's a little bit, uh, still mopping around a little bit. A little upset that I think his mate's gone. He's spending a lot of time with us, interacting with us a lot more, which is obviously what he is, but he does seem to be walking around with his tail tucked in, a little bit sad and a little bit under the weather. So, that's what I'm going to do today. Get the air stones changed. Although they are still panging out quite a bit of air, I want to know. I might change one and see if it makes a difference. If it does make a huge difference, then uh, jobs are good. And if not, I'll change them both. See if that makes a difference. And if it does, then that's sort of that thing. Now, I will give you a bit of an advice and a bit of tip from myself. You can take it or leave it. Do what you wish. Do as you please. But this is what advice I was given from my koi suppliers. I was going to put in a big flat air stone and he told me not to do so the bigger the item in your pond the more likely your fish have got something to smash and bash against causing damage injury so he advised me that these little small air stones I'm saying little you know they're quite a size are the much more better way to go that's what they use in their shop they don't have any flat discs they don't have anything else that's huge you know huge in size because as fish like to scratch themselves and flash against things it can cause damage so he advised me to go for these type instead to be truthful it's what came with my air pump when i bought them so i'm on replacing really much really lifelike and considerable amount cheaper than these big fancy air stones that don't give much more than what you get from a standard now if you've got a bottom drain obviously that's not an issue in the first place but you know i just thought i'd pass that message on it seemed like good advice from my koi suppliers so i thought i'd pass on the advice to yourself so little pond to uh, just check the impeller make sure it's clean give it a quick clean out and refit that back in new air stones in and a discussion and a chat about what we're going to do here with the backy shower 
I'm thinking that if I got the 500 or the 570 then I may be able to tuck it more across into that kind of corner and have it just running back into that corner there um, I don't know I mean I like the little one because it it wasn't so much in your face but I could switch those lower pieces of uh, excuse me Yorkshire stone out and move them over to that corner where the light is and took the 570 just in there instead and have that just you know at the back fish are all coming up ready for a bit of breakfast so I'll just grab them a bit of food let them have a bit of breakfast again as usual and then we'll, we'll start the work only a few little bits and bats to do this week not a great deal not a lot of stuff I need to do I just want to get something sorted out with this shower sooner than later so I'm hoping that I get my refund pretty quick because I would very much like to get this up and running and my pond as it was and what I paid for over three months ago. I'm disappointed at the fact that I'm having to go back through all this BS again. It's uh, it's annoying when you buy and pay good money for something and it's absolutely shite and inferior. It doesn't do its job. And I can only say one thing. If anybody else is out there thinking about getting one, heed my advice. And any other people, there's lots of other people out there that have had the same problems, similar sort of issues. Heed their advice as well. Stay away, well clear guys. Although it could just be coincidental that both me and several others out there have had this issue with the, uh, the backy shower. And it could just be a faulty batch of products and materials. And to Apex Koi if it is, then I hope you manage to get your problem sorted out. But unfortunately for me... Um, I'm not prepared to keep uh, going back and forth with this, exchanging parts, exchanging this, exchanging that and replacements for this. I buy a product, I expect it to do its job. If it doesn't do its job, I want my money back. So that's where we are at. I'll grab a bit of food, guys, and we'll give them a bit. Let them have the breakfast and we'll make a start. All nice and turned now. Even the new fa the new fella, he's not as spooked anymore as long as I move relatively slowly around him. He's quite happy to come in and have a free close up. That fish there, the centre of the frame, that's done some growing this year. I only got that this year and it was absolutely well. It was oh no I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure I think it was four inches when I got it but it looks like it's doubled in size um it's got a bit more black to come up and through there's a odd, odd little patch coming up and through on it I think it's gonna turn out to be a nice little fish all the rest of them seem to be doing okay I do seem to have like a um, my Yamabuki looks like it's got a couple of lighter colour patch scales on it. Now if anybody's got any info on that and what that could be, it doesn't look fungusy. But it does look like it's it does look like it could have caught itself or done some damage to itself. I don't, don't, I don't know if you saw it then on that shot. I'll try and see if I can get a picture for you. It just looks to have almost like some it's grabbed hold of it at the back end left and right because it's equal at both sides it's slightly raised if anybody's got any information on what that might be i am a bit uh, dubious about putting any more treatment in as they've been having treatment in the water continuously but if anybody can give me any, any advice and tell me what they, they think that might be there doesn't seem to be any other fish with any other issues other than this fish here, which I'm absolutely sick to back teeth for looking at, looking like that. It's 
I just wish I could get it looking right. And unfortunately, right now, it's not looking like it's going to be the case. Everything I've tried, other than the direct application of uh, antifungal treatment, that's the only thing that had any difference. But it came back within a matter of weeks. The salt bath has had minimal effect. If anything, it may have helped it shed a little bit of its slime coat, but not a great deal. So, I'm not 100% sure sure what I can do. I've got a few that do look like they've got koi pox as the water temperature is cooling again. The areas where they've had koi pox in the past seems to be coming back. The only, the only thing is, I can't justify heating a pond. Yeah, yeah. Your guys that are out there doing it, you must have some deep pockets. That's all I can say. It's too damned expensive. I don't particularly think it's right for the fish to be given continuous summer temperatures throughout the whole year. It's not natural for them. They would naturally get to a colder temperature, a cycle, and you know, go dormant for the winter. All carp do, all natural fish do. Nobody becomes along and sticks a great big eater in any of your local ponds, rivers and streams. It's a natural process that fish should go through. I'm not saying you guys shouldn't be doing what you're doing, but I'm, I'm just, for me, I can't see, you know, one, to be justify the price of it, because it must cost an absolute fortune. Two, the benefits to it, feeding all year round, yes, you're going to get a lot of growth, but to me you're also going to put a lot of stress on a fish that's not designed to do what you're doing. It's, it's not meant to grow all year round. It's meant to grow through the summer, spring, for its dormant period throughout the winter. So, is it doing it good? Are you shortening the lifespan of your fish? I'm not saying you are. I'm asking a question. If anybody's got any comments on that, or anybody wants to give me a little bit of info, or, you know, have your opinion, Share your opinion with others. Leave a comment below. Be nice to have a little bit of a chat and a discuss, discussion. Every you know, everybody can learn something from each other. So I'm more than happy to listen to anybody's information and your opinions, guys. So stick your comments in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think ponds should be heated? Do you think fish should be fed all year round? Do you think it's good for your fish to have heated water? Do you think it's good for your fish to be fed all year round? There are those that go to, you know, wheat germ, which I will be doing shortly as the water temperatures get cooler. I've already switched from my growth food down to a more staple, you know, staple food. And the next step from that one will be back down to uh, wheat germ in preparation for winter. And then come winter, they will be getting nothing. As soon as the temperatures drop below 10 degrees in the water, which is <laughs> not so far off. Um, that'll be getting, you know, that'll be it. The other thing is, the other thing I'd like to ask you all on what your opinion is, um, pond covers. I'll just stand back here guys so we can have a, a bit of a chat about it. Pond covers. Now, I was thinking about putting on some uh, pond covers this year. Again, I've not put pond covers on this pond in the two, three years, this will be the third winter now that I've had it. My dad and myself have had ponds you know, when, I, when I was a younger lad and I was living around with my mum and dad. He's had a pond and uh, he's never ever put any form of pond covers on his ponds. Now having a netting over your pond you do get a build up of snow and I, I do come out from time to time if it gets heavy amounts of snow and just scrape it off, remove it, throw it into the garden. But my other question is, and I'll, 
I'm not saying that this is right either, but I'm going to ask you all for your opinion on what you do. As the temperatures drop off in winter, the fish become dormant and they settle to the bottom of the pond to the deeper water where it's warmer than the temperatures above. Now, all you guys out there that have got bottom drains that are taking water from the bottom and banging it back in at the top, you're removing that option for your fish. Now a lot of people do have mid-water pickups and mid-water entries to return. My question is, if you have an unheated pond, we run the risk of the pond freezing over, which is, you know, it happens. I might get a couple of inches of ice on top of the pond. I've never had anything more than that. Maybe an inch in max, and even then it was only maybe two or three times throughout the year throughout the winter period, not a long time. So, what I've always done in the past is switch off pumps like that and my filter system and I've left my oxygenators going so that the pond can still gas off from the toxins in the water, the bubbler going, these two areas down at the top and the bottom where the bubbler is never freeze over so it might only partially freeze never fully freezes the oxygen moving the water and turning it over regular as it is prevents that from happening so i can still allow gases to be able to vent out of the pond as you know the same as putting in a, a, a little, you know one of these little pond eaters just so that you can keep the pond from stop you know prevent it from freezing over well moving water is the same thing if, as long as water is constantly disturbed and moved, it don't get a chance to freeze. Um, an example of that, guys, would be seals in the, the North Pole popping their heads out of a little hole. They go up and regularly keep popping in and out, and I tell you what, it gets a lot damn colder there than what it does over here in UK. And if they can manage to prevent those areas from freezing, I'm pretty sure the oxygenator bubbling away and water movement can prevent my pond from freezing over too. But there. That's what I've always done. I've always switched my, when it's come to the back end of the year and everything's done, I've done a deep clean of my filter system, give it all a good fell out, sort of like the last prep ready for spring, because there are no beneficial bacteria to grow or to be, you know, growing in a pond that's cold temperatures and not heated, the beneficial bacteria dies off. So when it dies off, is there a need to keep it running and keep it filtered? Is it okay to leave your system other than with fresh oxygen supply or fresh air supply? And like I said, prevention of freezing. Is it all right? What's your opinions guys? What do you do? This is what I've done in the past, but obviously I'm, I'm not saying I know everything. I'm asking for your opinions guys. What, what do you do and what do you think should be done? For now, that's a little couple of questions for you all. I will do a little bit of research on it, see what I can find. I, uh, I have looked at this before, there's lots of people's opinions about uh, spilter systems being switched down or, you know, preparing from ready for ready for winter, pond covers, heating and koi needing, all these kind of things, but um, from my experience, my fish to do okay yes I've got one or two with a little bit of carp with a little bit of carp pots but who doesn't even you guys with the big fancy systems that have got full central heating systems keeping your pond on still have fish with carp pots so it's not temperature driven there is no cure for it it's something apparently they grow out of it's just like us getting a cold saw it's a little bit of a, a virus that we've aged they tend to grow out of. So, um, what's your opinions guys? Let me know. I'd be interested to uh, check out the comments and find out. So for now, anyway, like I said, what we're going to do, we're going to change the uh, air storm. I know this is not, not, not nothing major. What I might be doing is actually taking a, a salt uh, water sample or a sample of water down to my local koi dealers and um, asking them to test the water, the water for me, see how much salt's in there, 
I was going to do that last week and never actually got around to it with everything that happened. I was a little bit deflated and I do need to pick my dad up some food for his fish and I do need to call around and give them a bit of food while he's been in hospital too. So I might take you with me on that one, obviously. It's only going to be a quick pop in, check my water, make sure it's okay. All the rest of the other parameters I'm going to do, I'm going to do a water test on it just to check. But you've seen me do that several times before. I just want to make sure that everything's okay and as good as it can be for right now and then we need to get something sorted out once I get my funds back for a replacement shower. If anybody's got any comments on that and knows of a good you know, company that can do something similar to what I've had on my pond for a reasonable price without breaking the bank, please feel free to share a comment. I don't want to make one guys. Not that there's anything wrong with them. I just personally for me, if I had somewhere that I could put it and it were out of sight then I would make my own. I would not bother with a shower being on my pond as some people have said in the past it distracts from how the pond looks I agree it does but not as much as what four storage boxes would do with pipe work sticking out of it looking like it's not meant to be there and that's not to have a dig at anybody else that's made them hats off to you guys that want to do it I'm, 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 I know a piece of it I could make one a piece of cake not bothered it's really easy there's nothing complicated about the design it's basically one box to another box to another box to another box with a series of old cascading water one through one and back in it's 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 not rocket science i could make one a piece of cake if it comes to it i may very well do but it certainly won't be visible and it won't be on the pond and that's just because i don't want to see that kind of thing on my in, in my garden pond there's lots of people that have made them out there and stuck them behind stuff um so yeah, I just don't think it looked right for my pond and the little co the little shower that I had I could live with. I wasn't 100% happy with it in its visual look, but I was happy with what it was doing. It's just the fact that it was leaking. That's why I want to get the replacement so it can do the same thing and have a, a new one fitted. So, well, that's me ranting on for quite some time, guys. I apologise about that. But let me know what your thoughts, let me know your opinions. Let's see if we can get some comments in that uh, comment boxes below. And, you know, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, whichever you're, you're interested in. While I've got you all here, what I will say is thank you very much. Those figures are slowly starting to climb. I'm up to 140 subscribers now. What I will ask of you guys is, and, and I'll give you reasons for, for it on why to. Um, whenever you like share and subscribe that allows the content creator to one meet his targets two it allows us to have our content pushed out more to a wider audience the more people subscribe the more people give thumbs up thumbs down the more that the actual video is shared and the content is shared to the wider audience so the the more obviously you guys do that kind of thing for me the more they'll actually show my channel to others the more they show my channel to others the greater my channel will grow which is what i'm after it's what you guys are after if you're interested in watching my content because obviously the more i grow the more i get to do the more you get to see so it's a win-win for all so thanks very much to everybody that has subscribed Thanks very much to all the new subscribers that have come along recently and thanks very much to all those people that subscribed from the beginning and keep coming back week in week out. It's very much appreciated guys. It's helped me uh, get through this little bit of a crap couple of weeks. Having something to focus on and something to do on a weekend other than sitting there thinking and focusing on what has been going on. It's, uh, it's given me a little bit of a, an outlet and a little bit of a relief. Well, Fish all look to be, I mean, water quality looks a little better. Nice and clean. Fish are all active, cruising around. You've all had a good chance to watch them while I've been talking to you. So we'll get on with the work, get what we need done, done and sorted. And then uh, I'll get right back to you. See you soon. Alright guys, I've just done a water test before I... Uh, do any work on the big pond I thought I'd just do a quick full all six tests just to see how things were 
I've already uh, given the little pond, taken it out, cleaned the impeller and put that back. But I've just switched it off again just so you can all hear me for this. So, these are the results of my pond test. So we've got ammonia, which is zero. We've got nitrate, which is zero. We've got nitrite, which is possibly a tiny little bit lowest scale I would have said perhaps maybe uh, a slight trace but not a great deal nothing that I'm worried about hello Zeus coming out to say hello stand all over boxes sit down then sit <laughs> come on fat head move out the way gonna... <laughs> sorry guys this is a dog um <clears throat> pH a little low I'm saying maybe 7.0 to 6.5 so I tested my gauge it took uh, with the KH test what you do is you add one drop of KH cabinet hardness drop to your 10 mil of water I think it's 10 mil 5 mil whichever and then you add one drop Mix one drop mix to determine shh, what your levels are. And I added one drop, give it a shake, and then added another drop to see if we could get it to change. And it changed with one drop, which means that my carbonate hardness is pretty low, in fact, extremely dangerous for fish, is what it says. If it's below one dkh. This is extremely dangerous for fish. So I've got some KH up and I'm going to have to put a little bit of that in. So I thought I'd check the uh, GH. Now the GH took um, is two drops of the first one and then you add one drop of GHB until you get your level to change to blue. And it took four drops for my blue. So my uh, general hardiness is, is pretty good. That's all right. It's about average. That bang on it middle, I would have said. I think anybody who knows anybody different, please, like I say, as usual, in the comments below, stick your uh, your thoughts in there. But I think four is pretty good myself. I think that's about average. So my KH is low. My G pH is a little low. Now, if I put some KH in, that will bring my pH back to a more stable level as well. Not bothered about this one we're not bothered about this one and we say we're not bothered about that one so we've no nitrite uh, sorry no ammonia no nitrite no nitrate ph is a little low kh is very low so we need to add some kh up and the gh is good so that's another job we're going to be doing but those are my results and uh, that's my findings for today's test hopefully if we get a little bit of this in like i said this will bring this up I'm going to have a read of the uh, instructions on the uh, KH up that I've got and see what it says and I mix it then accordingly and that's the plan so far but everything else ammonia and nitrite uh, nitrite and nitrate all bang on pretty much perfect I mean the pH is not too far off we can see if we put this down to the test I don't know if you'll be able to see that because the light is so so bright today it's pretty terrible but i'm for me it looks maybe 7.0 sorry 7.0 to 6.5 so it's a little low i normally have mine around 7.5 it's i've tried to keep it bang on it middle if i can so we'll see if we can rectify the ph by putting a bit of kh up because it does pretty much exactly what that's what it's that's what it's for increase your kh levels off your ph so that's the next plan. We'll get a little bit of that mixed up, get a bit of that in the pond. It doesn't do anything to the pond, doesn't discolour it in any way, shape or form. It uh, just basically raises the uh, carbonate hardness of my water, which in turn will uh, equal out and level out my pH of the water. So that's what that's one of the little jobs we're going to get done today. I just thought I'd let you have a guys have a look at the results from the test that I've done. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. I'll be right back. Alright guys, so 
what I need is to add some of the uh, NT Labs KH buffer up and it says on there stabilizers pH maintains healthy water conditions and it says here that what we should do dissolve the powder into a bucket of pond water before adding to the pond keep out of reach of children wash hands well after fish are handling fish and this product use the NT Labs hardness test kit to measure the KH of the pond water always keep the KH above 6 dkh for optimal water quality KH buffer up can also be used to provide additional carbonate hardness where tap water is naturally low in hardness, hardness material uh, minerals sorry right so what I need to do is increase the KH of the pond by 3 to 4 dkh by adding 50 milliliter powder to 340 litres or 75 imperial gallons. Now because mine is at present is at 1 dkh I need to raise it up to about 6. So if 50 millilitres of powder will raise it up to 3 to 4 dkh what I'm going to do is add 50 ml of powder to a bucket of water and then add that to the pond and then test again and see what how many how many levels we have then and if I require to do any more then I shall add a little bit more so for now that's what we're going to do I'm going to add it into my treatment bucket and see if we can raise this up so I'll get right back to you and then we'll get it added to the pond that's a 50 mil of the KH buffer up bucket of pond water Add it in there, stir it all up and mix it in, that's maybe not the best idea to stir it with your hand, but it does say make sure you wash your hands afterwards after handling this product, so I shall give them a good wash afterwards. And then, as you can see, it's not changed the uh, colour of the water at all. Apart from the hint of treatment which we've been using in the past. And then we're going to add it to the pond. And then what we'll do is we'll run a test again. And see how we do. One thing I will say is if you've got a net on your pond, it does dry with a white chalky substance on the surface, so you have to give your net a bit of a sprinkle off, but quick run with a nose pipe, should normally do the trick. I'm going to leave that uh, half an hour or so and retest again, see where we're at. I put the new uh, air stone on this side and the new air stone on that side, and I've also just piled a little, little rock formation around those uh, around that pipe coming in which will make it look a little bit better than just a pipe being laid on side now it doesn't look brilliant but certainly better than what it was for now i'm going to leave that running just as it is just for the circulation of water and a bit of extra surface tension being broke always creates more oxygen in your pond so we've got the main floor coming back in there the new stone on that one which is moving a lot more now the uh, secondary new oxygen coming in from that one until we get the new back of shower and the new stone just beyond that again so all in all we've got quite a bit of uh, turnover in the pond quite a bit of oxygen in, going in so like i say we'll test in another half hour and see where we go from there i then need to get a water sample and pop to my uh, local pond dealers Koi Carp Dealers, which is uh, a quality koi company, quality koi company in Brigham of Huddersfield. So I'm going to pop there and ask them if they'll do me a, a solidity test just to see how much salt's in the water. And if needs be, I'm going to add a little bit of salt to the pond as well. So when I get back, we can find out what the results are from the test. 
and if needs be we'll add a little bit of salt too. Before that I need to do a filter clean just on the mechanical side of things give them a freshen up and a clean up <coughs> and then pop them back in. Be right back. Right so adding 50 mil of uh, KH buffer up I've just retested and that now took two drops to get it to turn yellow so if it needs to be six what I'm going to do this time is add 100 mil to a bucket of pond water which is if 50 mil brought you up one DKH if that's right, am I saying the right word there? I think DKH um, then that's now made as two parts per million I think it is so adding another 100 mil in theory should take us up to four and then we'll retest again because I don't want to put too much in and I don't want to get it wrong so we'll get this stirred up and add it into the pond again and we'll test again and then again in, in another half hour and check if the uh, levels have come up enough I think when you're adding stuff like this it's always best to add with caution and do it bit by bit rather than trying to do it all in one go and getting it wrong and putting too much in I've not done much messing around with the KH and GH so rather than run that risk I'll just do it nice and steady and slow so again we'll add this into the pond which in theory should bring us up to 4 DKH and we'll see how we go from there Have a bit of luck, they should uh, improve the water quality for the fish and hopefully make the fish feel better in themselves as well. So, right again, half an hour, guys. See how we go, run the test again, check it, make sure everything's okay, and hopefully, this time, maybe we might be making our way to the uh, car supplies. So, <laughs> be right back. Right then. So, third test, do it and see. Nothing in. Uh, one drop first. We should then turn the colour light blue it says. And then you repeat the amount of drops counting your drops per. So one drop. Give this a mix. And as you can see there now, that's gone blue. So let's see how many drops it now takes. That's one drop. Still blue. Two drops. Still blue. Hopefully I'm getting this in shot. Three drops. So, so now we have a KH of three. DKH. So that's free. So we need to add a bit more again. I'd much rather do it this way, guys, because I'd never use this test anyway. Or perhaps maybe I should use it a little bit more often and keep an eye on it a little bit more than what I do, which I probably will start doing now, especially with it dropping as low as it has. So that's that's got us back up now to three, and we want to be up to six, and we've added 
hundred and two hundred and fifty mil which has taken us to three technically 250 mil again should take us to six but I'm not going to do it in one big jump I'll do it and test it again I won't bore you with the next test I'll test it again and see what it's like and when we get to the end result I shall show you hopefully if I don't I'll add one more maybe in another two two doses of it and hopefully if we get it bang on then I shall show you the end results so here we go be right back right so give it a try again one to turn it blue one two three Five. And one more six. There we go. So six DKH on the pond now so we've got that done and we've got the KH back to the recommended amount so what I will do now while I've uh, got a sample of water is we'll check the pH and see what effect it's had on that Five drops of pH and it's an instant result. This is not so easy with one hand. One, two, three, four, five. Put that lid back on. And we know everything else is all right. And that's brought us to about, I would say, 8.0. So, getting your KH right. Sorts out your pH. I mean, I normally try to go for 7.5, but 8 is within the, the chart which it says there. 8 to 7.5 to 7 is your green range and we've got the uh, cabinet hardness KH test to 6 drops the general hardness test was 4 drops the nitrate was negative none nitrate none ammonia none so that's all the tests done guys and everything back to water quality has been as they should be now I have just got a one second, excuse me, turn this lid up. A quick sample of water. It's just in a recycled plastic bottle. Take down to my local uh, fish dealers and then ask them if they can do a salt test because the salt test machines or digital readers are well expensive and I'm not paying 100 quid to test the water level or the salt of my water when I can pop to my local dealers and they'll go and test for me for free and I've got to go there anyway so it's a win-win makes sense so that was the next trip we'll pick up some food for my dad while he's in hospital we've got all the tests right as it said to use excuse me sorry about that camera work as it said to use the uh, NT Labs test it Pond Lab test kit from NT Labs, and I've used the uh, NT Labs uh, KH buffer up to get it right. 
and we've done that so I'm gonna go pick up some bits and bats from my dad and uh, get my water tested and then if needs be when I come back I'm also gonna ask him and make sure that I've just I'll let him know that I've just added up um, my uh, KH buffer up and whether or not it's a good idea to put salt in and KH buffer up at the same time or whether or not it might be worthwhile waiting until next weekend and letting it settle not adding too much stuff all at once but if they advise it's okay to do both at the same time I'll do you know what the professionals advise me to do always best to double check if in doubt ask guys because at the end of the day these, these people have been keeping coys for many many years and successfully doing so so right I'm going to pop to uh, see who's washing there trying to get a bit of drying done um, I'm going to pop to the local dealers, see what they say, and uh, pick up some food for my dad. So, be right back. Right, guys, so, got back from the Koya Kart Centre, had my water tested, and we have zero content of salt in the pond. So, my pond is 3,600 litres, which works out to require 11 kg of salt to get up to 0.3% solidity. So, I bought myself a new bag of salt, 25kg bag, and I have a 12.5kg bag which has been opened, which I used last year. So what I'm going to do is measure out 12kg of salt, add it into a big bucket, add a bit of pond water to it, and then I'm going to get it all mixed up and added to the pond. So I'm just spin the camera around and let you see. There we go, big tub. Partial bag of salt and a fresh new bag of salt. Sorry, that's slightly upside down. There you can see food grade, food grade vacuum salt. 25 kg bag. I'm going to use the remainder of this one first, measure it out, which will be 11 kg of salt, and then add that to the pond. I did check to make sure that the uh, it was okay to add the salt when I've been adding KH up buffer or KH buffer up and he said it's perfectly fine not a problem at all as you can see the guys are all swimming around and I've got to admit since I come back however it's the case that they want a bit more food they seem a bit more active and I would say that's probably because of the uh, parameters being absolutely perfect right now other than the salt content which is absolutely none in there I took a large sample with me and they did a big, uh, you know, digital tester, added it to the bottle to see if there were any content of salt in there and it came back as a zero, a zero reading. So with all the uh, problems of leaking ponds and leaking components, I'm guessing that I've obviously washed out the majority of the salt content that I had in the pond. So we're going to add the, the new one in and uh, as soon as I've got it all mixed up, we'll get on with it. So I'll get right back to you. Right guys, so here we have the contents of the salt in a bucket with 20 litres of water and we're just going to stir it up until it dissolves and once it's dissolved then we can get it in the pond. This will take my pond solidity up to 0.3 or 0.3 And hopefully this will help with one parasites, two prevention of parasites, three any uh, forms of fungus, bacteria, onset of infection, or anything else. My pond has always had salt in it, and this year, with obviously doing all the water changes that I've done, I've exhausted the salt from in the pond by basically water changing it out continuously by adding treatments, water changing, adding treatments, water changing so your salt levels never stay up at this level unless you constantly keep checking them and keep topping them back up so for now this is what I'm going to do I'm going to put this level in obviously I'll be reducing each week with my 10% water change so the amount of salt in the pond will drop off and disperse in the water change. But for now this is what we're going to go for because I'm sick of putting any other forms of chemicals in. Now some people say 
they don't use salt, they don't agree with the use of salt. The older generation of koi keepers tend to swear by using salt and swear that it's not such a good thing to be using all the chemicals and everything else that we add. So there's obviously some benefit to it. A lot of the main dealers salt their ponds. My dealer that I go to salt their ponds and they've advised me that this is the amount which I need and I require for my literage of my pond, 3,600 litres, which equates to 11 kg of salt to get to 0 point or 0 0.3 parts per million. So, stir all this up, as you can see, it takes quite a bit to uh, dissolve this amount of salt. So, a general stir up, we might have to put another bucket, add a bit more water to the bucket. But we'll get this in. Now, I did ask and I did question the local dealers and say, does this have any effect on uh, lilies, plants? Yes, it does have an effect, guys. But in low, low, lower levels, all it really does is slows the growth of lilies. Now, at the end of this, this being coming towards end of season, lilies are starting to die off. There will be no more flowers, I would very much doubt at this time of year, so it's not something I'm particularly all that worried about. And to be fair, if it kills the lilies and it kills the plants, I can replace the plants. I can't replace my fish. And I'd much rather them look as they did at the beginning of the season and the back end of last season when I had salt level content because the quality and the skin quality was never a factor or never an issue. And it's only this year that it's now become an issue, so I'm kind of kicking myself a little bit because if I'd have known my salt levels that had dropped off as much and I'd have fought to eject them, I might have saved that other fish that were in. It might not have got that infection as it had already. It may have already been okay, but you know, you win some, you lose some. As we said last video, this one hopefully we're going to get to. Uh, rectify so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add this little bit of pond what this salt into and I'm going to need both hands guys so I can't really lift this big gorilla tub full with the one I'm going to pour this in and for whatever's undissolved on the bottom I'm going to add a bit more water to it and dissolve that up again and then add that again now this is like I said up to 0 0.3 you can raise your levels up to 0 0.6 some say 0 0.7, 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 for when treating, when you're treating. That's, you know, going to be double the amount of what I've put in, so that would be uh, 22 kg of salt, which seems like a heck of a lot of salt, but obviously you, you reduce those levels after a, a seven days worth of treatment, so this is going to be hopefully at 0.3 and progressively lowering itself down as a water change for each week. So I'll get right back to you after I pour this in. Right guys, there we go. That's the uh, salt added. Spoke the fish obviously pouring a big bucket in like that. But they're coming out. There is a little, you can see just a slight covering on the bottom there, but that'll soon dissolve. Not too much. There's a little bit over here, but it should be okay. The only thing we add in salt, again, same, same as when you're adding the, uh, the KH buffer, it does make the top of your, your netting go slightly chalky white, but we can live with that. It'll uh, rinse off. So, there's a bit of a recap. Temporary little stone <laughs> structure to uh, just keep the flow movement in the water. Replacement of the uh, air stones. Added the KH up and got the pH levels back to normal 
added salt treatment, well not so much treatment but salt content to the pond to take us up to 0.3 parts per million and uh, a general clean of the filter system which we normally do weekly and uh, a partial water change prior to doing which you can see there the pond levels right to the top so I'm just going to keep my eye on that now and see just how much water I'll lose from my pond over this next week and then I can confirm 100% it was the back of shower that was leaking well I know it was anywhere like but I'm just you know just for, for the sake of checking fish are all cruising around now all moving about they don't say I spook for long I'll grab them a little bit of food give them their uh, the tea and then uh, we're good to go and then my water qualities and parameters were perfect other than the KH and the sorry the pH was a little bit off but adding the uh, KH up also stabilizes your pH so that's brought it back into the uh, 8.0 to 7.5 range for the pH so everything's as it should be at present so we'll grab them a bit of food and give them the last bit We'll keep an eye on them for the next hour or two with the salt levels that I've just put in. Make sure everything's okay. Shouldn't be any problems. They're normally used to it being at those levels anyway. So, like I said, there's a little bit there on the bottom that will dissolve in the next hour or so. Quite hard to uh, dissolve that amount of salt quickly. I don't think I've done too bad there to say that's 11 kg of salt that's gone into the pond. So, I'll give them a bit of food. Give them a bit of something to eat and then we'll uh, wrap it up. So, bear with me a second while I get a bit of food for them. Right, I had a read of the contents of the freshwater shrimps. High in protein, high in digestible protein, and keratin and vitamin A. Provides stimu uh, which stimulates a natural digestive progressing, uh, process in koi. So basically what they're saying is it's a good idea to feed freshwater shrimp to your koi because it helps them to uh, naturally digest their uh, their food. Let's see if we can see that what it says. There we go. I'm just trying to see where... It's best to feed shrimp just before your normal koi food as it will stimulate the digestive process enormously. It will also boost their vitality and colours. So freshwater shrimp, shrimp from Evolution Aqua. And I've got to admit guys, I'd stopped feeding the um, I stopped feeding the actual colour enhancing food quite a fair few weeks ago and I've been giving them a few of these every other day or so and let them come up and having a, a little bit of a, a munch on them and the colours do look pretty damn nice on the fish the reds look really vibrant so let's see if they'll uh, see if they'll come up and have a bit of them probably spooked them by throwing the water in but let's see what happens I'll only take one to spot them Oh, so, oh, there we are, there's one. <laughs> Had to be a chag with the first one that came up. No surprises there for most of you koi keepers out there, the first fish being up, which is a chag. But yeah, well worth looking into guys if you uh, Want an excellent, an excellent natural food, which is great for 
colour of your, and skin grow for, of your fish. Try some of these uh, freshwater shrimps from Evil Evolution Aqua. Evolution, Evolution Aqua. A bit of a mouthful to say. But yeah, there you go. They're all coming up now. They, don't, they do tend to get a bit spooked when you're doing something crazy like throwing them in big tubs full of water. It's not normal. It's, it's unusual for them. But, I mean, look. How vibrant the reds are. Colours are popping and I'm pretty sure it's something to do with well I've not been feeding the, the colour enhancing now for at least two months I don't like to give them high protein foods constantly all the time I give them a bit of a staple food now and then getting ready for the winter to drop them down to the wheat germ so fingers crossed we can get through this winter with no losses and no no problems as last year and for now we'll uh, leave them to finish the food off so then guys that's it this week from Gaz's Koi Pond if you've liked what you've seen share subscribe tell a friend and uh, once again thanks very much to all the new subscribers for all you guys that keep coming back for the regular content and uh, do us a big huge favour if you're new if you're new and you found the channel and you've enjoyed what you've seen give us a thumbs up smack that uh, subscribe ring that bell for all the notifications as it does help me to grow my channel obviously the more people do what you're doing the more my channel will grow because the more it'll be shown for future content and the more it'll be you know advertised out there for people to see so you'd be doing me a huge favour we are climbing up, up to 140 subscribers now, so I would love to be able to push up to, to 500 mark. And then obviously, if we can get to the 1,000, the, the which is my target, and then from then on in, we're, uh, we're sailing. So, like I said, guys, thanks very much, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Take it all easy. Bye-bye.